Hi everyone, thanks for joining for another video. Today's video is going to be a mid-month reading for all air signs, Aquarius, Libra, and Gemini signs, Sun, Moon, and Rising for the remainder of April. We're using three decks today, the Light Series Tarot for our main messages, the Chakra Oracle Wisdom Cards for our clarification, and the Oracle of the Seven Energies for our final messages. All of the decks I'm using will be listed in the description box below with some links if you guys wanted to purchase your own copies. <clears throat> All right, we're going to start off with Aquarius signs. Please show us what we need to see for Aquarius signs, sun, moon, and rising for the remainder of April. What do we need to know for Aquarius signs for the remainder of April? One card. Aquarius signs, sun, moon, and rising for the month of April. All right, we have the Page of Pentacles in reverse. Aquarius signs, some of you guys may be having a hard time uh, starting a new creative project, venture, or just in general starting like a new uh, stable chapter in your lives. I think a lot of Aquarius signs have been going through a major transition in life. Um, maybe some of you have gone through a transition in terms of work. And you're feeling like you can't really uh, take that leap of faith like you've been wanting to. Maybe some of you are facing delays or not getting the exact news that you want to hear in terms of creative ventures and possible new job opportunities. In love or in connection, some of you might be dealing with an earth sign, a Capricorn, Taurus, or Virgo. For others of you, if this is just energy, um, you're not feeling the most safe and secure. It's like you have a plan of action and maybe you haven't been seeing um, the exact results that you have been hoping to see in terms of like the progress of your love relationships even. Um, maybe you're trying to put your best foot forward, but your partner isn't reciprocating. And so there's like a lack of stability in your relationship. I feel like this could be more earlier stages <clears throat> in an existing connection. If you've been with your partner for a while, this could also be like avoidance of a topic that has more to do with like creating a solid foundation with one another. <clears throat> okay, we have service. Yeah, see, I'm like clearing my voice a lot or my throat a lot. So I feel like some of you may might have to have some sort of conversation Maybe you're avoiding a conversation. Gossip. I was just saying something about talking. <clears throat> oh boy. Maybe you guys um, are not feeling satisfied with the pace of your love situation. Instinct. All right. Yeah, I'm really getting that some of you Aquarius signs have been dealing with a slow moving partner. Some of you might be dealing with um, an earth sign, like I mentioned, a Taurus, Virgo, or a Capricorn, and maybe they're just not moving as quickly. <clears throat> Excuse me. They're not moving as quickly as you would like them to be moving in terms of the progress of your situation. Um, Maybe your partner, if it's not an earth sign and it's just an energy, there's a possibility that your partner might just be going through their own thing, um, transmuting their own negative energy, healing old um, storylines and trauma that maybe has been an influencing factor in the way that they handle themselves in love connections. I think you've really been here for your partner, Aquarius. You've really been there to listen, to help guide, to be empathetic. Um, and uh, I just feel like you're itching for some sort of movement. I'm getting a lot of stagnant energy. You're being called to use your instincts in this situation. If you know that you've reached a limit and now you're borderline inauthentic because you've avoided bringing up some topics that maybe will require more serious conversation and you don't really want to push your partner or make your partner feel forced in anything, I think you might be avoiding that conversation. And instead of talking to your partner about it, you're talking to your friends about it. The danger in talking to your friends about your situation, although it's great to get alternative perspectives, the other side to that is that they're not in your actual partnership. So it doesn't really matter how much you try to explain 
like your friends are not the ones who are participating in that energy exchange between you and your partner. So although it might be comforting to speak to other people, to get some guidance, get some feedback, hear alternative perspectives, at the end of the day, you really have to go back to yourself and go inward and really discover for yourself what's actually happening for you. Is your frustration rooted in fear? It could be that if your partner, or even if this is career, let's say something isn't moving fast enough. You're not getting that job fast enough. You're not getting the partnership you want fast enough. You, it's just slow progress. Talking about it with others can only get you so far if your actions are still, like you're giving too much to the wrong thing. Like, for example, let's say you want your partner to be more assertive um, in your relationship. Well, it's kind of counterproductive if you want them to be more assertive and you continue to keep doing everything for them and then you resent them when they don't step up and take control and take charge. You see what I'm saying? It's like you can't be looking for a specific outcome if your actions are not in alignment with opening yourself up to receive what you would like back. So I just feel like you kind of have to reevaluate how you're deciding to deal with another person, whether it's in job or in love. All right, hopefully that makes sense. That feels like a very specific message for somebody. Aquarius signs, let me know in the comments below if that resonates with you. All right, we did get a final card called Bearing Fruit. Let me just pull up this card. All right, I also just wanted to mention Bearing Fruit is the number 12 card. You can see at the top left corner of the card. Um, two plus one is three. Three usually means there's too many people involved. So in terms of the fact that you got gossip and you got a number three, I think now it's the time to have conversations one-on-one. -on -one. Um, enough talking to other people. I think you've already gotten as much information as you can from others to help you in your situation. But anyway, let's read the card. If your life were a tree, what fruit would it bear? Envision the results of the efforts you put into achieving your dreams and desires in partnership with the divine. Can you see the, that the way that you think, feel, and believe is reflected in the material world? There is always a correlation between what you see, what you expect to see, and what you intend consciously, and what you project unconsciously. Everything is intrinsically connected. Magic flows through you from the unseen world and into the world that you perceive, moving from the realm of non-ordinary reality to ordinary reality. You birth ideas and thoughts into forms and bring you most cherished ideas into fruition. Not all ideas will bear sweet fruit. Sometimes you will reap a sour and bitter harvest based on your sense of your personal narrative and your assumptions about others. You are in a powerful and fertile season of your life when you're practically good at making things happen with very little effort. Pay close attention to what you're manifesting now from your career to your personal relationships, your influence is strong at this time. If you don't like what life is yielding, prune the proverbial tree and get into alignment with what genuinely lights you up. All right, that's exactly what I was saying in my reading for you, Aquarius. Like, there's almost an inauthenticity that's happening now. Um, and I'm really getting like almost borderline passive aggressive in terms of like a connection a personal connection, it's like you, you would like for the other people around you to start acting a certain way, behaving a certain way, again, maybe being more assertive, but you're kind of setting them up to continue disappointing you and then you resent them in their like lack of authority in your connection. But really, you kind of have to just pull back, you know? Instead of having the conversations with other people and complaining, I think you've gotten as much information as you could get from other people to help you. Now it's a matter of acting in a way that's in alignment with the outcome that you are desiring. Like, what is it that you're actually trying to manifest? 
And that applies for anything in love and in career. And you really have to be clear with yourself about how what you're putting out there might be attracting the very thing that you don't want. So if you want someone who's more assertive, you want something to move faster, you want to turn this page of pentacles around so you feel more secure and it happens quickly, then you need to start behaving in a way that's conducive to that so that you can accept it when it ends up coming back to you. Hopefully this message resonated with you all. All right, next we have Libra signs. Oh, that's quick. Libras, you got the two of pentacles in reverse. Are you guys having a hard time making a decision, Libras? I think you guys are trying to balance out your energy, balance out other people's energies. I think even in the world, there's just a lot of stuff happening right now when you're, you're soaking in multiple perspective, perspectives of like various political things happening in the world right now, trying to hear things from everybody's point of view, trying to balance out everyone's opinions in comparison to yours. And right now, I think that's proving to be a little bit challenging. With the Two of Pentacles in reverse, not only is there a lack of balance, there's also a lack of decision making. In terms of globally, maybe um, you're just having a hard time understanding alternative perspectives now. Like, um, I don't want to turn this into political stuff, but like even just in terms of uh, racism, for example, I think you've tried really hard to understand alternative points of view and equalize things. And I think because of so much that's been going on, you're just not having it anymore. Like you're not having, you're not about having that conversation of the alternative perspective. Like it's just not a thing anymore. Um, in terms of relationships, I think you're also sick and tired of having to balance out everybody else's energies um, in work, balancing out other people's opinions. I think with the two of pentacles, now it's less about um, being faced with the choice. I'm really getting now that you're tired of having to choose. You're tired of having to juggle. You're tired of having to balance. Um, I'm getting frustration. Let's see what clarification cards will pop up. Can we get three clarification cards for Libra signs, sun, moon, and rising for the remainder of April? Libras, I think it's unfortunate that you guys get counted on so much to remain balanced. But as you can see here, it's like, oh, insecurity and guilt. Interesting. Even your emotions, you know, like, how do you always end up having to balance your emotions, even challenging tough emotions, even just with the racism thing that I brought up, like that's such a political taboo topic to bring up sometimes because it just divides and conquers people because it is such, it can be such a heavy thing to talk about. And I think, I think there's something here to do with being okay with your opinions as they are and knowing that the choice that you have to make, even if it's not the most popular choice, the most uh, politically correct choice, the most um, accepted choice in society, you are entitled to your own opinion. And I'm really getting here that you do have a choice. You can continue to balance out everybody else's opinions, everybody else's energies, everyone's everything, because you are one of the main people that others will go to uh, because they know they'll get an unbiased opinion from you. You're constantly balancing out pros, cons, every single side of every argument. And I think you're, there's a danger of losing yourself in the opinions of everyone else except your own. Like you have your own thoughts and opinions about your life, about other people. And I think because internally you've already chosen what is authentic to you and what's in alignment with you, there's almost like a guilt with feeling how you feel. But Libras, validate your feelings. Come on, guys. If anyone, if anyone should be able to validate their own feelings, it's you guys because you do see every side of every single situation. And if you're coming to a conclusion that, you know, might be upsetting for some people. Um, number one, don't feel bad that you have that opinion. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion. 
Number two, don't feel like you're in, your opinion is incorrect or that some people may not like you once you vocalize how you actually feel. You have to start owning your truth. Really own it. Allow it to be part of who you are so that you can shine your light onto the rest of the collective consciousness. Like there's people out there who need to know what your opinions are. And if you continue to always be the, the balanced one, you're going to live your life in complacency. You'll look back at these years and wonder why you didn't just say what you wanted to say. You owe it to yourself to validate your feelings and to not feel bad that maybe your opinions might not be in flow with the most popular opinion. And who cares? That's actually what makes the world such a special, beautiful place is when people are able to have healthy discussions and be, be able to agree to disagree. And I think a lot of that is missing in the world right now. And I think you are towing the line of just ex over exhaustion of always having to be the balancer of difficult situations. So I don't know why I'm getting such specific messages today. I, I'm hoping this resonates with somebody out there. But I really am getting that like it's your time now. It's your time to step forward and actually say what you think, say what you feel, validate yourself. Don't feel bad if other people don't agree. And it's okay. It's okay for you to actually pick a side, even if that side is just for humankind. Um, let's get a final card. Final card for Libra signs. What do our Libra signs need to know for the rest of the month can we get a grounding card one card all right so i was shuffling and four cards popped out and i'm just going to honor all four the first one that popped up is ears wide open the world is constantly speaking to us and offering clues about what is really going on beneath the surface of things we all have the capacity to hear beyond the noise that reaches our ears the challenge is when we feel misunderstood and unheard. When we feel insignificant, it's easy to over-explain ourselves in an attempt to get challenged, or sorry, in an attempt to get acknowledged. I don't know why I said challenged. I think for some of you, this is the challenge. The challenge is honoring yourself in such a way where you could vocalize your opinions and get the acknowledgement that you're so craving for just having your own opinion. Anyway, I'm going to keep going. Um, now is the time to let all of that go. Offer your attention as the great gift that it is. It's time to stop multitasking, checking your phone, thinking of what you're going to say next, and doing all of the other things that keep you from connecting fully. Purpose, open listening, is an act of true respect and intimacy. When you are in the space of receptivity, letting go of the need to be heard or to be right, you become expansive and alert to meaningful potential. Right now, keep your ears wide open and you will find more than you were searching for. Let's keep going. All right, next we have card number 10, Close Encounters. This is a time of connection that asks for you to be vulnerable and authentic. Oh, isn't that what I said? <laughs> I love when the cards are in alignment. Let go of any social masks or constructs that you use to keep yourself apart from others. Lower your shields and allow yourself to step into the dance of intimacy. When you become close to people, you remind yourself that you're not alone. You're part of a beautiful, meaningful bond. At a deep spiritual level, there are so many lessons offered to you in this closeness. At a social level, intimate relationships help you ignite the spark of life. That is the power of affinity. You flourish as a result of offering emotional honesty, a true desire for equality, love, friendship, and laughter. When you live this way, everything and everyone thrives. You have no need to defend yourself when you're being truly and utterly you, empowered by your raw openness and willingness to be seen. In this way, your close encounters will not fail you. There's so much to celebrate when you stand eye to eye, shoulder to shoulder, sharing your heart. Next, we have the rose's kiss. Take a deep breath and center on the feeling of joy. Can you allow your senses to awaken and connect to your innate desire to experience all that life has to offer? Pleasure is part of life. Let yourself surrender to it today. Our modern times often present a false ideal of how we're meant to express the world. Connections are lost and disoriented by our over-reliance on technology. 
Just look around and see how few people actually maintain eye contact or engage in conversation. Instead of tapping away at a screen, pause and consider how you can make more intimate contact. Your five senses are aching to be engaged right now. This is an invitation to get out of your head and into your body. You may be a spiritual and intellectual be being, but right now, the emphasis should be on having a sensory experience. This is a sacred part of this gift of life. By being present to the sensual world, you invite an even deeper spiritual experience. Very, very cool. And I feel like that's part of you releasing uh, the relationship that you have with your body. You know, when you're keeping yourself back, when you're holding yourself back, making yourself small, trying so hard to make everyone else happy by balancing out everything except yourself, you end up holding on to that tension in your body and it comes across through headaches, uh, neck pain, shoulder pain, uh, your back might end up hurting, heart palpitation, shortness of breath. These are all bodily reactions as a result of inauthenticity in our everyday lives. And I'm really getting the sense that the pattern here has to do with you really learning how to lean into your authentic self, even if it's not politically correct, and even if it might be upsetting for other people, because you're allowed to have your own feelings, Libra. And I think the rest of the month of April is really going to be about you becoming one with your thoughts, feelings, and desires, honing into what that is, and speaking it out into the universe. One more card. We have card number 14, Beautiful Uncaging. At this time, you're being called to assess where guilt, holy smokes, it literally showed up right next to the guilt card. Oh my goodness. Whew. Um, you're being called to assess where guilt is playing a part in your life. Recognize how it's affecting you and others and address it so you can release yourself from this grip. Guilt is a powerful emotional state capable of transforming difficult situations. It keeps you accountable for your actions when you've done something that causes harm. However, it can also feed a self-sabotaging cycle that fosters codependency and a dis distorted sense of personal power. Self-blame could lead to behaviors that perpetuate low self-worth. Interesting. Take a moment now to consider when you have harmed others or yourself. This acknowledgement will free you from the story that you tell yourself about. So you're able to connect with truthful remorse. Now is a time for rigorous honesty as you take a self inventory with a neutral state of mind. A good question to ask yourself now is why the guilt is there. You might be <clears throat> taking on a burden that is not even yours to carry. Pay attention, take action, and uncage yourself from the prison of your own making. That is so, so powerful. Libra signs, I feel like some of you, this might be more of like a personal connection um, that you're feeling in relation to these cards. For others of you, I feel like this is just your way of being in general. You take on other people's problems because you feel so responsible to balance out the peace, to keep the peace, to always maintain a neutral stance and juggle both sides of opposing views and I think in society at large we are so so thankful I have so much gratitude for what you guys bring to the table in that regard and please stop doing it if you are neglecting your own truth it's okay to actually have an opinion and I encourage you all really lean in to what that is show your authentic self give your real opinion and that is when you'll be able to attract back like-minded people. It doesn't make you a bad person for not being neutral. It's so okay to have an opinion. There is no such thing as right or wrong anyway. There's just how you feel about something. And everyone's feelings are valid, including yours. All right. And our last air sign for today's mid-month general collective reading is for Gemini. Gemini, sun, moon, rising. What do we need to see for Gemini's? Ooh, 10 of cups up, right? Yes, baby. Gems. For the rest of the month, you are going to be focused on creating a very loving 
compassionate, empathetic, understanding environment in every space in your life. You are going to be all about inclusivity. You're going to be about openness, having deep, intimate conversations, um, giving and sharing and receiving everything back um, in terms of emotions. With the Ten of Cups, this is feeling emotionally secure, safe, seen, heard. It's connecting with friends on a deep level. Um, it's cultivating a, a deep connection and understanding with, with your lover, your partner, or even someone, if you're just dating somebody new, it's taking your relationship to the next level and really experiencing a deep connection with other people. For others, this could be in terms of your family. Maybe you and your family are having opportunities now to really make amends, let bygones be bygones, and really focus on cultivating a true, strong connection. This, in general, is happiness. It's fulfillment. This is love. This is unconditional love without judgments, without fears. And when these things do come up, because it's normal that they do, it's the ability to transmute this negative energy into something that's fruitful and something that will manifest more abundance into your life. This is feeling supported. This is having a strong support system, having friends who believe in you, having family members that will help push you for your goals, having a partner in your life who's encouraging, who's a cheerleader in your corner, someone who genuinely loves you, people who really love you. And if this is a work situation, this is feeling accepted at work for being who you are, your opinions being seen, being heard, you being validated. This is just such a great way to close off April Gemini's. Ah, I'm like, I wish the camera was the other way around so you guys could see me, but I'm like, Dah! that's how I feel right now. It's just, this is so great. I'm so, so happy about this. Obviously, I'm a little bit biased because I too am a Gemini, but like in general, it's just such a great energy to have. All right, give us two more cards, two more cards. To clarify the Ten of Cups, we already have Perception. What two other cards can we get for clarification for the Ten of Cups? For Gemini signs, Sun, Moon, and Rising for the remainder of April. Gems, what do we need to know? One more card. Woo! We got some flyers. All right, Gems. So we ended up having two flyers. I just went to go pick them up off the ground. We have Perception. We have guilt, discovery, and bittersweet. Okay, so I'm going to flip these around, actually. Perception. What We're going to put these two together first. So I think for some of you, you've kind of just been going through the motions. Um, and I think, Gems, you guys have been really triggered lately <laughs> um, just by, you know, outside perspectives, your own opinions about where you should be in life right now, what you're trying to bring into your life versus what's actually there. And I think, I think you're slowly starting to realize that maybe, you know what, we're starting off with perception. <laughs> I think you're starting to realize that, you know, it isn't even really about whether the glass is half empty or half full. It's just this idea that the glass is actually refillable. I'm going to say that one more time. It's not about whether the glass is half empty or half full. It's about the fact that the glass is refillable. And I think you're starting to realize that the, maybe the perspective that you've had regarding whatever situation, whether it's in love or whether it's in work, maybe for the last little while, there's been a bit of frustration building up because it's not exactly what you want it to be right now. Gems want things done right now. We understand the value of hard work, but we're rapidly moving all the time. Like our minds are rapidly on the go and we are constantly physically on the go trying to make it all happen. That sometimes it's really hard to comprehend why it hasn't happened yet, whether in love or in work, or whatever you're trying to manifest for yourself. And I think now that you're kind of seeing things from an ulterior perspective, you're realizing that, you know what, even if things aren't happening as fast as you would like them to, it's actually not that bad. 
it's like a bittersweet feeling. Okay, maybe you didn't get the exact job that you wanted right now, but you were able to connect with like five other people who are now trying to hook you up with another opportunity. So even though you didn't get the exact same one that you wanted, it actually worked out even better for you. Or in relationship, maybe you tried to have a conversation about bringing your relationship to the next level. And in these hard conversations, you realize that maybe you guys need to pause for a second because someone isn't ready yet. And even though like it sucks that someone isn't at the same level as you or vice versa, maybe you're not at the same level as someone else, the honesty and vulnerability and authenticity in these conversations is actually such a bittersweet thing. Like it's sad, but it's beautiful because now you get to appreciate one another for who you really are. And you can actually build from the same place, from that same place of authenticity with one another, which is actually so much better than trying to force an outcome. And I think you're learning so much more about yourself about how you vocalize your opinions, thoughts, and beliefs, the expectations you have of other people, the expectations you have of yourself, and you're learning to let go of wanting what you want. I think, sorry, letting go of the guilt you've associated with wanting what you want. And you're learning to validate yourself. Like, it's okay to actually want love. <laughs> it's okay to actually want to settle down. Gems have such a strange... Um, like people think such strange things that gems like don't want to settle down, that everyone is just like flirty and flighty and can't be trusted or reliable, which is just, it's not accurate. It's just not accurate. As a blanket statement, a generalization, it's not accurate. And I think, I think you're coming to grips with just owning what you want. If you want a relationship, I think you're finally okay with that. If you want to settle down at work, I think you're finally okay with that. I think you've been trying so hard to juggle people pleasing with your own dreams and desires. Um, and the problem with that is when you're operating to make other people happy instead of acting authentically um, from a space of like, of true desire, you end up making everybody unhappy. And really what I'm getting for you this month is that you're finally just okay. You're okay that things didn't work out exactly as you wanted them to work out. And the acceptance of it being what's so, the peace that you arrive to through your acceptance of it is how it is, is actually the very thing that gives you everything you've ever wanted. Does that make sense, guys? I hope that's making sense. It's like when you finally release control of the outcome of how you really want it to be, that is actually the moment when the universe says, okay, you finally get it. I'm gonna bless you with some goodness now. And I'm gonna give you something even better than you dreamed of. And you're gonna experience what it's really like to connect with people. And more importantly, what it's like to connect with yourself. Once you can finally let go of the thing that you've been holding on to and squeezing the life out of, you'll finally get to experience that 10 of cups energy. All right, let's keep going. Can we get an outcome card for Gemini's? Wow, this air sign reading has like taken the breath out of me. <laughs> All right, I hope you guys are still with me. Gems, let's get a final card for you. All right, you guys also have ears wide open. Also, 33. This is the second time that we've gotten this card. I'm going to read it to you guys again. All right. Ears wide open. The world is constantly speaking to us and offering clues about what is really going on beneath the surface of things. We all have the capacity to hear beyond the noise that reaches our ears. The challenge is when we feel misunderstood and unheard. When we feel insignificant, it's easy to over-explain ourselves in an attempt to get acknowledged. Now is the time to let all of that go. Offer your attention as the great gift it is. It's time to stop multitasking, checking your phone, thinking of what you're going to say next, and doing all the other things that keep you from connecting fully. 
Whenever we're in a state of chaos and distraction, paying attention to only some of what is being said, we lose the ability to pick up on everything, including that which is not being said. Deep listening is a way in which we immerse ourselves in the truth of the world. In this way, with ears wide open, we can also open our hearts and minds to understand more than what is conveyed through the words alone. Opportunities arise from the subtle cues we miss when we are not 100% present. Purposeful, open listening is an act of true respect and intimacy. When you are in the space of receptivity, letting go of the need to be heard or to be right, you become expansive and alert to the meaningful potential. Right now, keep your ears wide open and you will find more than you were searching for. And that is exactly what I was talking about. Gems, this is such an important life lesson because again, I really get it, you know, like as a gem, you have this idea in your mind, you've come up with like a logical way to attain and manifest this thing that you've imagined, whether in job or in love or even like just relationships in general. But the thing is, we get so consumed with the process that we've laid out to get there and we've convinced ourselves that this is how we're going to do it. That anytime you deviate from that plan, it's almost jarring when things just don't work out that way. And I think for the remainder of the year, something that was once kind of sad, you realize is very bittersweet because you're now actually hearing, you're hearing people. You're hearing what people are actually saying. And most importantly, you're hearing your heart's true desire. And I think it's going to come into fruition that this month, Maybe there was part of you that was acting a little bit in fear because trying so hard to maintain control of everything and to stick to the plan is actually, it's almost low vibrational because of your inability to move through the ebbs and flows of life. When you're so stuck to the rigidity of a plan, sometimes you can't even recognize it when the universe is trying to bless you with something even better. And I think at the end of this month, you're really going to get that gems and it might not look exactly like you thought it would look like, but it's actually even going to be better for you. You're going to be happier. You're going to feel even more seen, even more heard. The moment when you finally let go and relax in life and remember that the universe really does have your back, that is the exact moment you're, get, you're going to get everything that you've ever wanted and even more. All right, air signs, thank you so much for joining me for another video. Please make sure that you like this video, you subscribe to my channel, and you also hit that notification bell so you will be told when I drop the next video. All of the links to the decks that I use are down in the description box below if you wanted to purchase your own copies. And if you wanted to follow me on Instagram for daily card pulls, uh, my Instagram handle will be down in the description below as well. Have a fantastic rest of April, and I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye!